In this video, we're going to go over where we are in our prototype stage of our ZF9P SD card logger built for a UAS or drone. Um, in this case, we're using a Pixhawk Cube, the 2.1 version. So your connectors may be a little different, but the idea is the same. If you've seen our previous video uh, where we built ZF9P with a SD card logger and a LCD screen, uh, the idea is basically the same. We've just created a smaller version of that and a smaller footprint. But definitely go check out that video if you haven't seen that to get a good start on the idea behind it. So just to go around here and look at what we have on here, we have a regular 8-pin connector. and we're pulling in, receiving and sending data. We have a TX and RX. We have an I2C cables, the SCL and SDA. We have power, ground, and interrupt key. So we have all that flowing through here. And we made this um, a disconnected cable so you can put this on your drone or you can use this elsewhere um, in other projects. Here we have our standard SMA connector. Um, for ours, we bought the ZF9P with the SMA version where it's connected directly to the board, but that's not a necessity. You can get a UFL to SMA a bridge or connector. Here on the side, we have a reset button. Now, you don't need to use that a lot, but sometimes when you start it up, it may not uh, boot up correctly. So you just hit the reset button and you'll see um, everything will work out. Here we have the on off switch. We don't necessarily um, always need to have an on off switch on these cases, but in, in this one, we have a battery in here. It's a small, I think it's a 150 um, milliamp hour battery. If you just had this on the whole time, it would just drain that battery dead. And that battery, by the way, is also charged through this R5 volt connector on the rail to our Pixhawk. Um, you'll see here also we have the SD card itself where this logs all of our data and easily accessible. For now, this seems to work out okay. In the future, we may 3D print this to make it exactly how we wanted it, but We'll put this box, um, a link to this box, and the one we found was seemed to fit the, the what we needed for this in this case. All right, let's take a look at what's inside. So in the back here, we can see we have the OLED screen, and that's connected by the I squared C. We have our header here. Over here on our ZF9P, we have an I squared C bus. You can get these pretty cheap. It just splits off the I squared C into two connectors. And here we have our interrupt key or interrupt header. And over here, we have our RX and TX sending data to our RX TX on our Adafruit logger. Uh, we have our battery that's down in here, you can see, and that connects to our uh, Adafruit logger battery port here. We'll put the schematics up and show you that later on in the video, but just to get an idea here of what it looks like inside the case, maybe help in getting your setup also. One other thing too to point out is you can see here on the one corner of the ZF9P, we have a standoff um, connecting the other corner of the Adafruit logger, which just keeps this in place. It keeps them both from moving around. And obviously we had to cut out a little piece here for the um, SD card port, but it just gives you an idea we can get a little closer look also at the reset switch and the on off switch how we have those wired in there maybe give you some help on yours 
and on ours also you can see we have the the F9P board with the SMA connector already um, attached to the board so that you can just go right through the end cap there. All right, let's take a look at what happens when we turn this on just to get an idea. Now this is running the sketch, the Arduino sketch that's attached and uploaded to the SD card logger. We'll put a link to our GitHub page with that sketch in the description below. But one thing to remember when you turn these on, the SD, uh, ZF9P, it's a good idea to have your SMA cable connected to your GNSS receiver, your antenna, because it can cause uh, damage to your board if you don't. All right, let's turn on our on-off switch here on the side. Um, takes a couple seconds. You'll see just a little splash screen here with the Adafruit. It's saying it's ready. It goes through a couple of rover mode selected, initializing an SD card. Now all this, the messages and everything that's displayed here, this is all customizable. We we have this, but you can add additional messages if you want or display more information. But just remember, this is a small OLED screen, so you're not gonna be able to show too much data, but it's good to show if you have any problems or errors. And now we can see we're logging to this file, which is stored on that SD card. It's a UBX file, so that's just our raw messages coming from the F9P. Now if we hit our reset button here, we'll see file closed, and then it logs to a new file. Okay, for some additional technical information, go out to our website at skyhorsetech.com. At the top there, you'll see a link to recent projects. Click on that. Scroll down and you'll see a link to our post, how to add RTK to Pixhawk. Click on that. And here you'll see additional information and background, links to our older posts, previous projects where we use ZF9P. Here's our GitHub uh, link where we have the Arduino sketch for the OLED. And also we have additional information with the dimensions and sizes of the cuts we made to the box, which should get you um, a head start. It takes a little bit of um, time to make those, but it's worth it. Also, you'll see a diagram here with all the components and descriptions to give you more information there. Here's a wiring diagram with our header, OLED display, all the other components linked together. That should help you also. And here is our wiring diagram, our header with the different um, wires to the pins on your Pixaw cube. Now notice there's a little bit difference between GPS one and GPS two. And then also on, if you're using the older Pixaw versions, there's a little bit of um, different wiring there. So you'll need to consult the um, Pixaw website for that. Here's a shot of our wiring harness. Um, we also go over some additional links here with from ArduPilot and other websites where you can integrate RTK. Now here's a link to, again, our Skyhorse OLED um, sketch on GitHub. You'll want to use that. You can download that and then use it inside of uh, your Adafruit logger. But other than that, we have a link to the materials list on Amazon and elsewhere. Um, that should help you get started. So here's how we have ours set up right now on our UAS, our drone. This is on the Taro 680 Pro frame. Right now we just have it um, zip tied to the frame. You could come up with some other system, Velcro or whatever works for you. But for right now, that just seems to work fine. And you just want to make sure when you have it on there, it doesn't weigh much, but it will affect your center of gravity. So just take that into account. 
But you can see our ribbon cable there with the eight pin header comes off and then it we have the if you look at the wiring diagram you'll see how it's set up but on this it goes to our gps2 port on your pixhawk on the cube or depending on what model you have you should have a gps2 port there and then also our power cable is coming off to our rail we're only using the ground and the five volts there and we have ours separately powered by different uh, separate batteries so usually you don't want to power things off of that just from the regular power source but other than that we have our gnss antenna here we'll leave a link to that also but you want to try to keep that as much separation as possible between that and your regular antenna but that just gives you an idea how you can set that up. And just a sneak peek too, what we're working on, we're gonna use this F9P um, on a USV unmanned service vehicle or a boat using Pixhawk. And in 2021, we should have that going. And so stay tuned for that. Other than that, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next year.